Hi, this is Krishna from The Things Industries, and in this short session, we are going to take a deep dive into certain important concepts of the LoRa Basic Station Protocol. The format of this presentation is going to be in a question and answer format. Uh, most of these questions have been sourced from the Things Network forum or from uh, all the pull requests or some certain documentation requests that have shown up in our past uh, interaction with LoRa Basic Station users. So what is LoRa Basic Station? Uh, LoRa Basic Station is basically a, a packet forwarder protocol and an implementation. So it, it's a definition of certain specifications that the gateway packet forwarder binary should run and also the network server. And it's also a reference implementation of set software. It's open source, it's lean, and it's highly portable. And it supports two very powerful backend protocols for the gateway to interact with the network. So these two protocols are respectively the LoRa network server or the LNS protocol and the credentials and update management or the CUPS protocol. So the LNS protocol is the actual endpoint where gateway traffic is sent to. Uh, this endpoint is also the place where the gateway, or, or in this case the basic station packet forwarder, receives the radio configuration for the particular gateway. And it consists of a handshaking mechanism for service discovery such that the, the endpoint where the traffic can be sent can be moved or configured by the server at runtime. On the other hand, the CUPS uh, protocol is, is just a server where the gateway receives credentials for the LNS, pro LNS endpoints, which means that the LNS endpoints can be switched around uh, at the, in, on the server side at runtime dynamically because the gateway will always connect to the CUPS endpoint to receive the credentials for the LNS endpoint. This CUPS endpoint also serves firmware updates to gateways. Gateways using the LoRa Basic Station packet forwarder occasionally contact the CUPS server to fetch a new configuration. And uh, when they do that, any updates made to the, the LNS endpoints or the credentials to the LNS endpoints are served to the gateway from the CUPS server. So the LNS endpoint serves the radio configuration to the gateway. But one of the most commonly asked questions is what, what does radio configuration mean? Basically, there are three types of configuration uh, on the radio that you can set on a gateway, which is the hardware-specific configuration, which is the clock source, the offset for the RSSI for incoming packets, etc., which is specific to the hardware of a particular gateway. Uh, you have also certain configuration defined by the LoRa1 regional parameter specification, uh, for example, the, the data rate uh, indices and the mandatory channels for in certain regions and also on top of which you have user-defined frequency settings which is the subband you can choose for regions like US and AU or the non-mandatory channels which are free for the user to define in regions like EU. So what is the hardware specific configuration? This is basically stuff that's unique to each gateway. In each LoRa Basic Station gateway, you have a station.configuration file. This is just the default name of the file. You can choose any file that you want it to be. This is shipped inside the gateway by the manufacturer. Uh, some vendors allow you to edit this, but ideally this should not be edited by the users. This is meant specifically for the hardware and the configuration that's running uh, in that particular gateway. So on the right side, I've shown you an example configuration as such, and this is the station.conf file. Uh, I've sourced this from the official or basic station documentation. S so certain fields which are specific to the gateway, uh, the, the clock source, for example, the device, uh, whether it's SPI or USB, for, such things should be present in the, in the station.conf file, and the network server will not serve these fields. Now, the second type of radio configuration is the region-specific configuration. This is defined by the LoRa1 regional specifications, and it's common for all gateways operating in a particular LoRa1 regulatory region. However, uh, since the gateway, since only the user knows in which region a gateway operates in, this is set by the user on the server side, and the server will pick up the common configuration for all gateways operating in this region and it will add that to the router config message uh, that is sent down to the gateway. For example, in this case, the data rate indices uh, for a given LoRa1 band is actually defined in the LoRa1 specification, uh, which is defined in the DRs field. This, is, this cannot be modified by the user or should not be modified by the user, but the, these are defined by specification. So the network will just pick up those predefined values based on the region chosen uh, and send that down to the gateway. 
And finally, you have the user-defined frequency configurations. This is usually the values that are free for the users to choose. For example, the non-mandatory channels in the European bands or the frequency sub-band in AU and US bands. For the ThinkStack Cloud and the ThinkStack Community Edition, this is via the lower one frequency plans repository. So in case you have a custom frequency plan or a frequency plan that is used by a lot of members in your community, then you must first of all create a pull request to this repository, uh, have it reviewed and accepted. And once this is available, this frequency plan will show up in your uh, configuration options on the server side. For enterprise deployments, this is fully customizable, in which case you can either fork or create a copy of the LoRaWAN frequency plans repository or build your own repository and have every field of it completely customized. The next hot topic in LoRa Basic Station is the modes of authentication. LoRa Basic Station defines uh, bi-directional authentication mechanisms. So on the server side, this is via a trusted certificates. On the client side, this is either through a HTTP token or a client side certificate authentication, which is called mutual TLS. Um, there are certain files defined in the specification, which are the trust files, the cert file, and the key file. Uh, and these are the values that, are, that you're supposed to fill in order to achieve certain modes of authentication. And we will go through each of them now. So uh, server is authenticated by something called a chain of trust. So this is quite a complicated concept and I'm trying to simplify it so that the important concepts are understood. So you have a root CA or a certificate authority who usually signs an intermediate CA, which is an intermediate certificate authority. And this authority signs the certificates of the end service. So in this case, it could be the EU cluster of the ThinkStack Community Edition or the NAM1 cluster. So the certificates that are presented by these servers are signed by a CA. And as a gateway or as a client, all you have to do is trust the CA and you can trust the certificates provided by these end servers. They're called leaf certificates. So the gateways must have the root CA installed uh, in, in them. And the, the certificate presented by the, the ser server can be cross-verified with the ones of the root CA for the signatures. And if it matches, it means that the server can be trusted by the client. Um, one important thing is that there are many root CAs available in the market and the gateway should support installing multiple CAs. If you go to this documentation link, there is a list of um, commonly used CAs. For example, ISRG, DSD are both on Let's Encrypt, Amazon, uh, the things industries have our own root CA. So this is what we call a minimum certificate list, and we expect all gateways to support having multiple uh, CAs installed in them so that it's much easier for server-side TLS management. Um, so this value is set using the cups.trust file in the gateway, which is just a PEM encoded uh, file, or the or the tc.trust in case of LNS, but we recommend setting the cups trust. Now, on the client authentication side, the ThinkStack currently only supports an HTTP token authentication. The mutual TLS is on the roadmap. Uh, we only support HTTP token right now because it's the simplest one and it covers uh, most use cases. The ThinkStack also specifically only supports the ThinkStack API keys, not any random HTTP token. The reason is that uh, these are first of all randomly generated by the server side per gateway uh, and these cannot be reused between gateways. We have had instances in the past where uh, people use the same key for all their gateways and that's extremely risky behavior security wise. Uh, and also the, the API key has an additional feature that you can attach certain rights to it. So when a client, in this case a gateway, presents an uh, out token, the rights for the actions that this API key has can be easily inferred directly from the API key. And this value is actually set using the cups.key file uh, or the tc.key in case of LNS. So a very important question when it comes to credentials is should I set the cups credentials or the LNS credentials? Um, we always recommend setting the CUPS credentials because that's how the protocol is defined to work. The idea is that the gateway will always connect to the CUPS server. It will then fetch the credentials of the LNS server from the CUPS server, or the CUPS server will send that to the gateway, and then the gateway will contact the LNS. So the idea is that the CUPS server will have a stable chain, a stable certificate chain, um, a stable location where you can the gateway will always contact 
the cups server and the lns servers can be moved around if necessary uh, gateways also allow you to set the lns credentials but we generally do not recommend that because that's not how the protocol is uh, create meant to be um, one important thing to note is that if you set both cups and lns credentials the lns in the gateway will be overwritten by the value sent by the cup server so please be aware of this Another frequently asked question is, I need a certificate and a key file for my gateway. Where do I get it? Um, this combination of a certificate and a key file is meant for client uh, TLS or MTLS mode of authentication. For the things that cloud, as I said before, we don't yet support it. Um, for HTTP token out, you don't need the cert file. All you need is the key file. And the, it's very important to note that the key file, uh, the contents of the key file has to be in a certain format. It has to be a valid HTTP uh, header with uh, the CRLF line endings. So if you go to this link in our documentation, we have explained how you take just the API key and run a command to convert it to the dot .key file that you need to then place in your gateway for the HTTP token out. And a very hot topic on our forum is, can I connect my things in door gateway to ThinkStack Community Edition? The short answer is very soon. Uh, and the reason why is that the things in door gateway is designed to be a zero touch interface gateway, which means that we do not want uh, the users to ha go through a lot of hassle to configure the gateways, which means that a lot of options required for users to directly manipulate the gateway is not exposed. It's designed to be fully controlled from the server side. So ideally, all you have to do is just plug in your gateway, uh, authenticate it, set a Wi-Fi set the Wi-Fi password and it should just connect to the server that you want it to connect. The, this requires some work on the backend infrastructure that's necessary, but we are working on it at the moment and it's expected to be available in the next couple of releases. So this short session of 12 to 15 minutes isn't sufficient to go into detail about every aspect of our basic session. If you'd like to learn more, I have a few recommended links or reading for you to, to learn more. Uh, the first would be a presentation about the LoRa Basic Station from Anton from Semtech and myself. Uh, it's on YouTube. All you have to do is go to YouTube and look for Gateway Demo LoRa Basic Station. And you will find a video where we go in depth into why uh, the protocol was invented in the first place and also how it is helping us maintain gateways in production. The official documentation for LoRa Basic Station can be found in this link where you have detailed documentation on the protocol, uh, on the concentrator design, on uh, the, the different authentication modes, files, etc. This is the place to go for all your documentation needs. And if you want to know how to configure gateways to the things stack, uh, then we have a dedicated section in our documentation for LoRa Basic Station uh, where we talk about how gateways are connected and also we have uh, such sections for each gateway that is listed in this uh, documentation. And finally, please go to our forum where we already have many questions answered. I myself have answered quite a few questions there and uh, our moderators are kind enough to answer your questions and you will mostly have solutions for your problems there. And finally, a lot of gateway vendors, uh, will gateway manufacturers will be presenting their gateways in this uh, conference and they will also show you how to configure their particular gateway to uh, the thing stack. So please stay tuned for the rest of the uh, conference and thank you.